Hi, this is Yarrow Stu with Don Speared Vikinger again. This is the next video in the series. Uh, this video more pertains to Viking Age reenactment and how to acquire the materials spoken about in the last video of linen and wool. Drake, you're fine for five minutes. That's my other dog. You've probably heard him in several videos. He does not like to be in his kennel. He is a wiener dog of high pedigree and likes to zoom across the floor and literally everything, including the TV stand and everything like that. So we can't have him out. Um, so as I was saying, this is more pertaining to the Viking Age reenactment side of fabric and everything like that. And also learning how to use the skill of identifying and finding fabric that is you're able to use for as historically accurate as possible, as well as not breaking your bank while you're doing it. Um, let's start with linen. Linen is super expensive here in the United States. You find linen for, you know, $12 a yard that, and those yards are only a yard by yard, you know, 36 inches wide, and it's just astronomically expensive. And honestly, it's probably one of the most used fabrics. So one thing you want to do when you're searching for linen is actually check the check what it says on the tags. You want to go for 100% linen. Rayon is chemically and industrially pressed plant fibers mixed with plastic. So it's not a Viking Age material. Also, polyester, not a Viking Age material because it's just plastic. So part of identifying fabrics is you want to look at their traits and attributes, okay? When you go to a store and you're looking through the sections or you go to a, a yard sale would be a better option because that's where you're going to go to to find super cheap fabrics is going to yard sales so we'll go we'll start with that yard sales of being able to identify fabric first you want to look at the state of the fabric and what i'm meaning is how does it what's its texture like okay if it is a, basically whether it is smooth or fuzzy. Now, if it's smooth, it can be linen, polyester, cotton, everything like that. It can be a little bit bumpy. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is fuzzy and smooth. Fuzzy, you can wind up with polyester, wool, rayon. You can also wind up with radon with this. But if it is a Viking Age reenactment appropriate authentic material, if it's fuzzy, it'll be wool. If it is flat, it'll be linen. Now, the biggest problem is that people will often pass off cotton as linen. There are ways to check for that. And when you're going through looking at linen okay one thing with linen and the difference between linen and cotton the only way to ascertain the difference between the two is to actually take it you make a small little snip on the side and you tear it and you stick your face in there like you're some kind of gourmet chef because cotton won't smell like anything but if you've got yourself linen, you will smell shredded wheat, the cereal. The best way to example this is for you to go out there and find some nice thick linen canvas. You can generally find it in upholstery sections. You get a little test swatch from the people. Lots of fabric stores will allow you to have a little test swatch take home to see if it matches the material at home or anything like that. And you can actually snip it, cut it, and when you tear it, it'll actually plume up in the air and you'll be able to smell it for a brief second, almost instantly. It'll be indistinguishable. 
and well known. Um, and it does the same for regular linen and everything like that. So you want to test that to make sure that it is linen. And what you want to do for a true test on the fabrics, on whether it's even worth your time of trying out, let's say at a garage sale. Garage sales, you'll find that you'll find with a lot of like mixed little scraps of fabric or, you know, exposed edge fabric bolts and everything like that where somebody's already cut. Now, you can't just tear it there on site and everything like that. And that's the great part about linen, by the way, is that if you snip it and tear it, it'll tear in a straight line. So you can actually stop cutting linen as much and get to actually constructing your kit faster by just tearing the pieces you need. But what you can do is you can actually take all these loose little strands, grab a couple of them, and you get yourself a lighter and you light it on fire. Now, linen and cotton will burn in the same manner that grass would burn. Well, duh, because it's made out of grass or paper or wood. It'll slowly turn to ash. You know, it doesn't ball up or anything like that. It just kind of burns. With polyester and rayon. This is how it would burn when you take those little strands off. First, most people will be able to tell that it's polyester by just pulling it off because it feels like you're tearing in garbage bags. But for some fabric, Drakey, you're fine. For some fabric, it will be indistinguishable because it's a high quality of polyester that actually makes it look like it. Drakey! But when you light it on fire, it'll instantly shrivel up into a molten ball of melted plastic and flame. And basically, with that, you know it's instantly not Viking reenactment appropriate. And, um... We'll be doing a, another video where I actually light the stuff on fire close up to the camera so that you guys can be seeing these things in person. Um, now, same test with wool. You go there, you see it. You know what polyester does. But wool smells like burning hair. So you will know that it's wool once you burn it. It, it goes up just like linen or cotton, but it'll smell like burning hair. So you can at least get that out of the way of knowing that it's wool. Now, you will find silk occasionally, true silk. And the best way to tell the difference between silk and polyester is the burn test. Some people can feel, touch it by feel and sound of it rubbing against itself. And they are, you know, experts and everything like that, but the simple burn test will actually provide a solid view of these actions. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think I'm just going to have to make another section to the video at another time and just add it on. To the end of this video so just assume that you're going to see the tests on the added on but silk comes in a variety of looks all the way down from what you would imagine is a standard kids tutu material or cheap you know kids kids costume where it's basically see-through that can be silk that type of material can be silks so check it um, all the way to shiny. Now, shiny is a dead giveaway for being polyester. Drakey! It's a dead giveaway for being polyester. And 
the fact that, you know, that's just the ability of plastics is to be shiny, whereas linen and wool will not, for the most part. But to tell whether it's silk or polyester fake silk, you have to do the burn test. So, now, with the different fabrics and everything like that, you will find at a store cotton substitutes. This is a cotton substitute wool. It looks just like wool, it feels just like wool, but when you burn it, it doesn't, you don't smell like hair, so you cannot use it for a very authentic Viking reenactment. Drake! He wants to rock it here, and it's just the way he does things. Now also, there is a fabric created from the bast fibers of the cotton plant, and it's called Osnaberg. As I explained in the previous video, bast fibers are the actual vegetable side of the plant. Now, technically, is it Viking Age? No. But it is near indistinguishable from actual linen. When you cut it and you rip it, you can smell that shredded wheat smell because it is produced exactly the same as linen. So, depending on how authentic your group is, you could, in theory, get away with this and no one would know the difference. It's super cheap in comparison to linen. But it's not technically Viking period. So use that information how you see fit. Um, because it's not made from the poof, which most cotton is, but rather the actual plant of cotton. Now, to get more into the more bulk cotton purchasing when you're not purchasing by the yard and necessarily everything, everything like that. You have to look at the deals of price by yard in a couple of different ways. One, if you go to a, you know, hobby store, you are going to wind up spending more money than you need to by yard. One, the yardage width is small, generally 36 inches, which is only about yay big. And you're gonna wind up paying that retail store price. The best way, aside from basically scrounging in every dumpster that you could find of, you know, houses that people are moving out of and, you know, rummaging around yard sales when you can, is to buy in bulk from other companies. You can research it online and everything like that. One of the companies that I found, which I'll put a link in the comments for, is Dharma, they have at Dharma sun bleached linen, which cut, which is very white. It's great for dyeing. And they also have a whole bunch of natural dyes. They're a big company on doing natural things. It may not be Viking age dyes, but they are natural dyes. They create wonderful colors. Like this pink is a Dharma dye. So you can buy that stuff there and you can just buy an astronomical amount of linen and it is high grade linen it's super thick but soft and it just produces some of the best stuff and on top of that the width that it comes in is a very high width for what you are buying for the most part you can buy dye a yard of super wide linen for around eight or nine dollars so when you're buying it in bulk, you can buy it by 25 yards and everything like that. And they will give it to you and they will send it to you in a box with just like this. This is actually Dharma linen. Bought this for $120. This is 20 yards. It was a super sale. So they have those frequently. And if you're a return customer, they will do a great job of keeping you informed of sales. They will also email you on the progress of their order. And when you buy something that is currently out of stock, you receive an email within a day. On top of that, almost every time that we have ever ordered from them, which has been dozens of times over the years, we have 
asked them a question on their customer service and they have gotten back to us multiple times a day to try and fix the problem. Another thing that you wanna do when you're buying fabric for yourself or for your reenactment group is you wanna keep a lookout for fabric stores closing because I got this unknown roll of upholstery linen. We don't know how much is in there, but we're guessing that it's at least 10 yards just because of how thick it is right here and everything like that. Really nice linen. We did the burn test on it, it works. It's nice and soft. It's actually softer than the Dharma before you dye it and wash it a few times. It's super soft, great for just usage linen, everything like that. We bought this whole thing when a local hobby store was closing down for $8.49. That is astronomical and we keep it around just so that we can use it for all sorts of things and everything like that, mainly under you know the first layer of garment wear because it's nice and soft, but not the point of this video. Another thing that you can do to help yourself and your Viking Adrian Ackman group is with wool. You can find on Amazon, as well as in surplus stores, 100% wool blankets for around $20. Granted, they aren't the most pretty things because they're basically old army blankets come in grays, browns, blues, and greens, and everything like that. But they are $20, and they are generally somewhere between 4 by 6 and 6 by 8 They're great for quick cloaks. They're great for blankets and everything like that. And if you can find yourself a couple yards of great linen, and you get one of these blankets, you can make two heavy woolen coats that will keep your people warm for dirt cheap. You just have to figure out how to sew them all together. So, when you're going after fabrics and the like, and you're just starting out, go cheap. Take the time to look. Our Viking reenactment group is all very big about membership taking their time to do stuff. Because realistically, if they were to listen to our advice and slow down and take their time on finding their stuff, they will find that they not only can afford their clothing on a cheap budget, but they can start doing more advanced work for their clothing and start having worrying more about getting to the event, learning crafts and everything like that, than worrying about how they're going to pick up an extra shift just to pay for a pair of pants. So what you do with this information is your own. And I hope that anybody who will, you know, leave in the comments section anything that they know about finding good cheap fabric. Post some links to some great websites and everything like that. Now, we're going to get on to the burn test so that I can show you up close in person what some of this stuff looks like.